I want to try out another very interesting integral from MIT 2006 Integration B. And if you guys want to check out the Integration B video, I included a link down below so you guys can go and check it out if you want to. But in this video, we are going to concentrate on solving this very, very interesting improper integral. And I have it graphed right here and this is from Desmos.com. I want to make sure I give credit and you are going from 0 to pi over 2 and this function is natural log of sine of x. So this function is y equals to natural log of sine of x and you have a vertical asymptote going this way and you want to find this area from 0 to pi over 2. And when I first saw this integral, and you may do a similar thing I did, I realized if you let u be natural log of sine of x, then u prime is going to be cotangent of x dx, or if you let u be sine of x, then u is going to be cosine of x dx, and since and I tried to use some properties of natural log or some u substitution to mess around with this integral and u substitution, but it really didn't work out for me. And you guys can try it out if you want to. I highly encourage you it, even if you don't get the answer, just messing around with integral and substitution uh, can't hurt you in any ways. It's only going to improve your ability to manipulate and uh, deepen your understanding, even if you don't arrive at any conclusion. And since, since that's, that wasn't doing anything, another thing that you naturally start to think of when you see a definite integral is to think how we can set up an equation using this expression, using this expression integral from 0 to pi over 2 of natural log of sine of x dx. And you may say, what do I mean by setting up an equation? Well, if you guys remember integrating from uh, 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared over 2dx, I made a video about that and you guys may see some eye popping up and you can click on the side to go to my video where I prove uh, that this integral is, uh, I believe, square root of pi over 2. I believe so. Hopefully I'm not messing this up. And when we were evaluating evaluating this integral, we let this integral be i, and we showed that using some manipulation, i squared was equal to pi over 2, and that told us this integral, or i, was square root of this. So we are going to use a similar technique. You are going to let this integral be i. This is a very standard technique. When you're working with definite integral, that doesn't really work out well. And you're going to try to do some things with this expression and write another equation, maybe 2i plus 1. And in, in now you can find i using, using this equation. So you want to somehow get another equation in terms of this expression using, using some manipulation. And you may say, how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing I realize is that you have natural log. And we know natural log of x plus natural log of y by property of logarithm is natural log of x times y. So maybe if we can find another expression that looks similar to this, we can add them up and produce natural log of x, y. And the natural thing to turn towards is natural log of cosine of x. How is this integral related to natural log of cosine of x? Because you already have sine of x, and cosine of x seems very intimately related to sine of x. And if you guys are if you guys are very advanced or you have a lot of experience in uh, uh, messing with trigonometric identity, you may realize when we multiply sine of x and cosine of x, you get one half times sine of two x. And I'm going to address this fact farther down, and I'm going to elaborate on it. Uh, it, it not, not right now, but it, within within a few minutes. But you guys may see that, and you may say, "Oh, maybe this thing is going to work out. Maybe we can make another substitution." And that's going to encourage you guys to come up with natural log of cosine of x. But at any rate, natural log of cosine of x sounds like a reasonable choice because you want to produce another expression similar to this one that we can work with. So let's try to see how these two are related. Well, we know by, by co-function identity, sine of x is equal to cosine of pi over 2 minus x. An easy way of seeing it is by drawing a right triangle. I'm just going to prove it for angle is less than less than pi over 2. If you have x, this angle is 90 degrees minus x, or pi over 2 radians minus x. And sine of this angle, which is opposite 
over hypotenuse is precisely equal to cosine of this angle, which is the opposite of x divided by hypotenuse. So you get this identity right away. And it's, it's a little bit more complex to prove it for any x. But in our case, we're just going to assume that this identity works out. And I'm going to go on. So we know the, the starting expression, integral from 0 to pi over 2 of natural log of sine of x, the same thing as natural log of cosine of pi over 2 minus x dx. And let's say you want to change this to natural log of cosine of u. So let's make the substitution. u is pi over 2 minus x. So this thing becomes natural log of cosine of u. And what's du? Well, du is just negative dx. So you got to add a negative sign. So you have du. And what's our bound? Well, when sine is 0, you when, you when you have sine of 0, you want to have cosine of pi you want to have cosine of pi over 2, right? So you instead of 0, you want to put pi over 2. So let's replace it. And when sine is pi over 2, our corresponding value for cosine that gets us 1 is going to be 0. And you, you may say, what am I talking about? So let me, let me explain that one more time. When sine of x, so we know sine of x is equal to uh, when you, we know u is equal to, this is the easier way of explaining it, uh, my bad. We know u is equal to pi over 2 minus x. So when x is 0, our u is going to be pi over 2 minus x or pi over 2. That's why we want to match 0 and pi over 2 as lower bound. And when u is pi over 2, when, when x is pi over 2, I apologize, our u is going to be pi over 2 minus pi over 2 or 0. That's how you get 0 for the upper bound. And this thing is negative. Or uh, integral from uh, let's uh, pi over two to zero. But you remember, we you can flip these two. You can flip the bound, so you can change it to zero to pi over two, and that's just going to make this positive. When you flip the bounds, it you're basically multiplying by negative 1 to what's inside the integral. So this thing becomes natural log of cosine of u, but u and x are basically the same thing. So you can change it to cosine of x dx by saying u and x are the same thing. What I'm say telling you is when you have a function, y equals to natural log of cosine of u and y equals to natural log of cosine of x. Don't, uh, just forget about this. I'm not talking about this. I'm just talking about just random x, random u. This x is not the same x that I'm talking about up here. If you graph both of them, so u axis and y axis and u axis and y axis, u sh uh, x axis and y axis, since you're, you're just changing u with x and your axis is changing, you should have the same graph. So natural log of cosine of u du and natural log of cosine of x dx should be the same thing. So we know, we know uh, this expression i, i, let me rewrite it, i equals to our original expression, integral from 0 to pi over 2 of natural log of sine of x is equal to sine of x dx, let me rewrite is equal to integral from 0 to pi over from 0 to pi over 2 of natural log of cosine of x dx and we know let me reemphasize natural log of a plus natural log of b is natural log of a times b so what's i plus i what is this integral plus this integral well our bounds are the same so we're going we can keep it the same from 0 to pi over 2 and you have natural log of sine of x plus natural log of cosine of x dx and by by this logarithmic identity you get you get natural log of sine of x times cosine of x and for those of you that remember the identity sine of 2x sine of 2x is 2 times sine of x times cosine of x you may say we have sine of x cosine of x so you can divide this by 2 so you can get sine x cosine x is equal to sine of 2x over 2 and we can change this to integral from zero, from 0 to pi over 2 of natural log of sine of 2x over 2 dx. And what do we do now? Now, what can we do with this expression? Well, we know natural log of a over b is equal to natural log of a minus natural log of b. So you can break this apart. Integral from 0 to pi over 2 of natural log of sine of 2x minus integral from 0 to pi over 2 of natural log of 2. I'm just breaking this sine of 2x divided by 2 uh, dx. And this part, this part is obviously 
Um, so let me, let's go to the right. So we have integral from zero to pi over two of natural log of sine of two x dx. And this part, you have a constant function natural log of two, and your interval is from zero to pi over two. So that, that turns out to be pi over two times natural log of two. And if you're wondering why, just think about what, what this function is. You have y equals to natural log of two, which is constant. So you have natural log of two, and you're finding area from zero to pi over two. So you have a rectangle with height natural log of two and with pi over two. So our, our area turns out to be pi over two times natural log of two. Now, how can you write natural log of sine of two x in a way that it looks like natural log of sine of x dx, our original expression. Well, you just have to make this substitution. 2x is equal to u. So we have, let me rewrite this part, integral from 0 to pi over 2 of natural log of sine of 2x dx. We can let our u be 2x. So du is 2 dx. And we have integral, and you have natural log of sine of u. And since our dx is du divided by 2. You want to divide by 2 du, and that's 1 half integral from, well, what's our bound? When x is 0, our u is 2 times 0, or 0. When x is pi over 2, our u is pi of natural log of sine of u, but we can just write sine of x, dx. And what is this? Integral from 0 to pi of natural log of sine of x, dx. Well, if you're going from 0 to pi, this is y equals to natural log of sine of x. If you're going from 0 to pi, since this function is symmetric about pi over 2, our integral from 0 to pi, so we had 1 half, 1 half times integral from 0 to pi of natural log of sine of x, natural log of sine of x, dx, is going to be just, so going to be, so this part is going to be twice the, so twice, twice the area from 0 to pi over 2. 0 to pi over 2 of natural log of sine of x dx, right? Because you, you from 0 to pi, the area from 0 to pi is twice that. So you have this part plus this part. So that's twice just from 0 to pi over 2. And 2's cancel out. So you have integral from 0 to pi over 2 of natural log of sine of x dx. And voila, this thing is i. That's the expression you started with. So what happened? What happened to us? So you have you have you started with i plus i, so you had 2i, and you ended with, you ended with this expression, turn, this expression turned out to be i, so we ended with i minus pi over 2, natural log of 2. So we have, let me reemphasize, we got i plus i, or 2i is equal to i minus pi over 2 times natural log of 2, so our i is negative pi over 2 times natural log of 2, and we are done, because the integral we, st we started out with was equal to i, and we know i is equal to, we know i is equal to negative pi over 2 natural log of 2, so integral from 0 to pi over 2 of natural log of sine of x dx is negative pi over 2 times natural log of 2.